Uh, this is a wonderful time in the presence of God. I take this moment uh, to bring to you the word of God, uh, which is going to bless your life because we, we understand that uh, God speaks to his people uh, through his sermons, uh, according to Jeremiah chapter 3, verse number 15, uh, to give you knowledge and understanding of what God has intent, intentioned for, you, uh, for us to receive. So today I want to share on this topic uh, the origin of the church and the existence of the church. This is going to help us to understand the mind of God and what God has in his will according to the purpose to why the church can exist today. I'll read the Bible from the book of Matthew chapter number 16. Matthew chapter number 16. Bible says from verse number 13 when Jesus came into the coasts of Caesarea Philippi he asked his disciples saying whom do men say that I the son of man am and they said some say that thou art John the Baptist and some Elijah and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets and he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon but Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee but my father which is in heaven and i say also unto thee thou art peter and upon this rock i will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it father in the name of jesus i pray that as i bring this word let your people be blessed in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we want to share on this topic the origin of the church. The origin of the church. I begin by saying that the church began in a very uh, dimension that we need to understand here. Jesus appeared to his disciples and he asked the disciples, Whom do people say that I am? Whom the people say that I am. And the Bible says they say that people say that you are Elijah. You are Jeremiah. And the others say that you are one of the prophets. But Jesus understood one thing. He wanted also to know what do the disciples know about him. So he turned back to the disciples and he said. Whom do you say that I am? Then, when Jesus passed that question to the congregation, which is the disciples, the Bible says, it is only one disciple who answered that question. Peter raised his hand and he said, You are Christ, the Son of the living God. One of the things we need to understand, ladies and gentlemen, we have a lot of gods. We have different types of gods. But here Peter is trying to put something in place so that all of us, we can understand who Christ is. And he says, you are Christ, the son of the living God. In other words, this is the man who comes from the living God. And Jesus said, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church so the reason why jesus is saying this it is because of the revelation peter received concerning him you need to understand the church begins with the revelation it begins with the revelation revelation of knowing who is god who is christ and the bible says here peter said that you are christ the son of the living God and Jesus said very good it is 
well because the flesh and the blood it has not revealed this to you this type of revelation can only be revealed by the father i declare to somebody here today that the kingdom will reveal something to you you need to get a revelation from above and the bible says that uh, god jesus spoke to him and he said this type of revelation it means Jesus might have had different revelations but this one was very different the revelation that came from above when you read the Bible in the book of first John chapter number five verse number seven the Bible says for there are three that bear record in heaven there are three that bear record in heaven the father the word and the Holy Spirit and the Bible says the three are one. In other words, the three are in agreement. And they are a secret of the kingdom. Now my question is, how comes Peter receives revelation of these three that are one and they have the secret of the kingdom? That one makes me to get a revelation here that for you to understand the heavenlies, you must be related to the Father, relate to the Holy Spirit, and walk in the Word, which is Jesus Christ. Therefore, the Bible says, and Jesus said, this type of revelation, you have not just gotten it here. It originates from heaven. Oh, somebody, you need to understand this. It originates from heaven. There are revelations, you cannot get them in flesh, and in blood this means peter was a spiritual man i declare to somebody here we need to walk in the spirit to understand the things of the spirit because whatever that is pertained to the spirit it is spirit and what is pertained to the flesh it is flesh so peter was not in the flesh because the Bible says, Jesus said, this revelation, you cannot access it in the physical dimension. But you can only access it in the spiritual dimension. And he said, it is the Father who is in heaven who has revealed this to you. Listen here, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 4, and God is the Spirit. God is the Spirit. If God is a spirit, and now Jesus says, this revelation, Peter, you have not just gotten it here on earth, but you have gotten it in heaven, it means spirit attracts the spirit. And therefore Peter was in the spirit. And God is the spirit. And for that reason, they connected in a place called revelation. I am standing here to declare to somebody here, the church of God, it is not a physical thing. A church is a spiritual thing. Because a church is hidden in God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The church is divine. The church is so powerful. Nobody can destroy the church. You cannot pull down the church. Oh, I am declaring to somebody here. When you demolish a building, you haven't demolished the church. The church is hidden in God. The church is hidden in God. In other words, the church is divine. The church is supernaturally divine. It is gotten or exists after getting the revelation. Hallelujah. It's a revelation. The Bible says after the revelation, Jesus told Peter, you are Peter. You are Peter. Those who are Bible Bible theologians, they can bear with me here. The name Peter is a Hebrew name. It means a rock. Therefore, the church is built on the rock. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 10 verse 4, there is a what we need to understand, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible says, and the Israelites, they drank water from the rock that followed them. And the rock is Jesus Christ. Therefore, the church is built on Christ. The church is built on Christ. The foundation of the church. The 
the foundation of the church if the devil is after the church i am speaking to somebody here today if the devil is after the church he must go through jesus he must go through god himself if he cannot overcome God I am declaring to somebody here without fear The devil cannot overcome the church Even Jesus said I will build my church on this rock And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it In other words, hell cannot lose the church Hell cannot approach the church Hell cannot shake the church Hell cannot bring down the foundation of the church. You are the church. I declare to you today, as you are the church of Christ, everything that you face, everything that you are getting in this world, it cannot shake you because we are hidden in Christ. We are rooted in Christ. We cannot be demolished by any means. I will build my church. This makes me to understand something here. The church is not a property of an individual. The church is not a property here on earth. The church is something that is in the spirit. There is something you I want you to get here. The Bible says the church of Christ. The hell cannot go against it. Which means it is founded on a revelation. And revelation you need to understand. It means we are abided to God and God is with us. You cannot separate Christ and the church. I wish I'm speaking to somebody here. You cannot separate church and Jesus. Jesus and the church, they are one. Because the Bible says Christ is the head of the church. Christ is the head of the church. If you want to find the church, you will first of all, Go through the head, which is the leader of the church. Hallelujah to somebody here. You need to understand that the church of Christ, it is the property of the kingdom. And also another thing that you need to understand, the church is the voice. 